Whoops! What's going on out there, YouTube? This is JSR of Two Broke Gamers and a Nerd, and I want to show you guys something kind of cool. This is an old Super Nintendo, and it's really hard to tell on camera, but it's kind of started to yellow. You can kind of tell right there the difference. Now, this is the only yellowing Super Nintendo I have that I can showcase this trick to you. What we're going to do is we're going to restore this yellow and it will actually be just as white, if not whiter, than this yellow when we're all done. I'm also going to do the bottom case, although as you can see, it's not nearly as yellow. It's kind of good to tell right there. Um, I'm also going to swap out the guts on this one. This was an original uh, Super Nintendo with the uh, removable Mitsumi sound chip. And I'm going to replace it with a modified one chip with the one chip amp board so it'll be a little better oh one more thing i almost forgot to mention um don't do as i'm doing i've done a lot of super nintendos and super famicoms as far as modding them taking them apart cleaning them restoring them uh don't do what i'm doing this is a dead board i don't give a damn if this board is ruined it needs work anyways and i know where all these screws go um this is a room that's not gonna get bothered so i'm good uh first things first work in a well-lit well-organized room and make sure that this guy doesn't get shocked. To take this thing apart, get one of these. This is a game bit, and as you can see, it's got an interesting little head in there. And the reason you want a game bit is that the Super Nintendo is held uh, together by these little guys, these screws. And I've seen tricks where people use um, screwdrivers with slots dremeled into them, uh, melting big pens. I mean, hey, if you can get it apart without breaking it, by all means, but keep in mind, your system, if it's yellow, it's probably very brittle, and if you start jamming into it and messing with it too much, you might crack these little corners. These are the most common areas that yellowed Super Nintendos have breaks in. So if you're really trying to keep yours in pristine condition, don't even bother, dude. It's like five bucks on eBay. Just get one of these, wait a week, and then you can do this at home. Um, that's my advice. Also, keep all your screws separated. Don't do as I'm doing. There are three types of screws in a Super Famicom. You've got these silver Phillips screws, you've got these brass Phillips screws, and then you've got these game bit screws that go on the outside. They hold the Super Nintendo together. And um, the brass screws, you can mix those up all day. They're all the same. The Super, or excuse me, the silver screws, when you have your board sitting in here, they go on each side of this, the cartridge slot, I guess to support it when you're putting a cartridge in. And then they go up around the power supply. I suppose that's to keep it together while you're yanking on it, uh, when you're plugging things into it. I don't know. Also pay close attention to how you eject mechanism. The spring goes into here before you take it apart. And then if your model has this guy, just keep in mind how that looked. And then you got the spring here that you got to pay attention to when you take this apart. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, if you know how to take anything apart with a screwdriver, it's pretty easy to do. There are more detailed videos on the internet on how to take apart a Super Nintendo. That's not why I'm here today. Without further ado, let's move on. Okay, so it is about 3.30 in the morning and I'm making preparations. And my goal is to put this out on my patio so that the sun will hit the system at basically peak UV all the way up until about noon because my house, the way it sits, uh, the sun will go into shade around uh, one o'clock in the afternoon or so. So I'm gonna put this out right before sunrise. And what I'm going to be doing in these little baking pans, I use tin foil to reflect the UV up so I can get all the way around the edges. And then these little guys, I'm just going to put them in a bowl. And if you didn't notice, this is our secret ingredient. Regular, cheap hydrogen peroxide. Now, if you're familiar with RetroBright, okay, RetroBright works, but there's a lot of problems with RetroBright. The first and biggest one is that it's very patchy. So if you don't apply it completely uniform all on all of the surfaces, because I've done it before, you get these little clouds. It's hard to, to describe, it'd be easier to show, 
but basically it looks like uh, cauliflower. -y. I guess a good way to describe it, if you look on here, you can kind of see the uh, discoloration in the plastic on the bottom. It kind of looks like that, but this hasn't been retrobrighted. That's just the way it did that naturally. Well, you can use uh, prescription strength or food strength hydrogen peroxide. Um, but it's very expensive and it can burn. So over my uh, years of experimenting, regular 3% hydrogen peroxide, I bought this at Walmart for 88 cents a bottle. And I bought 12 bottles, but I'm gonna try to use only eight. And what I'm gonna do is I am basically going to soak these in hydrogen peroxide. Uh, my goal is to get the level above every surface. Step two is to use saran wrap, just basically any clear wrap, and uh, that'll keep it tight, it'll help to reduce spilling, and uh, it will also help to reduce evaporation. Okay, so slight change of plans. As you can see, I wasn't able to get the uh, dish like that to work with the top. I guess it was just too shallow, and every time I put the baggie on it to keep it from floating, it would spill out the sides, so I had it improvised. Just a basic clear dish. You can see the uh, sandwich baggies are doing their job. Everything is uh, submerged properly. And uh, sunlight should hit it pretty good. Got it fully saran wrapped three ways. So there's a good seal all the way around. This should do the trick nicely. Now over here, however, the bottom, not only did it not float, but it fit perfectly. It's fully submerged. All right, so it is approximately 12.30 my time. And uh, about eight hours has passed. Eight hours has come and gone. And as you can see, the sun has finally gotten to the point where it no longer hits our lovely setup here. It's kind of tough to see how it turned out in the shade with the, with the peroxide still in there. So we're going to take it inside, rinse everything off, and we'll take a look. All right, so far so good. But if you look at it, you can still see just a little bit of discoloration. Now, just off this result right here, I'm already 100% pleased. However, uh, since we do have some daylight left, which means we still have a lot of UV left, I'm going to soak this in that hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to change locations. I'm going to let it sit for a few more hours just to try to maximize the results. But as you can see, um, I don't know if you can see it anymore. This was really, really discolored when we first started. You can still see the original, <clears throat> the original gray on this side and the yellowed side. It's really difficult to make out now, though. I mean, you can barely tell the difference. I could reassemble this now, and really, honestly, you would never know that this wasn't just a really good, in good shape Super Nintendo. You can kind of tell. We're going to put them back out for a couple more hours. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our finished product. And you can still kind of see the difference. This one lightened up to the same shade, or a little bit different shade, but about the same whiteness. But from back here, I mean, I'm, I'm two feet from this thing with the naked eye. I can't tell. And on camera, you can barely tell. Um, just to prove it's the same one, you've got the mark here, and then the colored backing from that one chipboard that I, again, was, it was a, a failed experiment of a paint job gone awry. Um, all in all, it turned out great. I did a couple mods to it as well. I, uh, modded the cartridge slot so it'll play Super Famicom and PAL games. Um, everything works on it. It is tested and approved. I'm kind of fucking with this because it feels a little stiff, but it works. And uh, basically, that's the magic of hydrogen peroxide on old school electronics. This thing looks damn near brand new. So that's about it. That's how you fix a yellowed game console. And this will work with any video game consoles or old electronics. The longer you leave it in direct sunlight or the stronger the peroxide, the better the results in shorter amount of time. Stupid sticker. Feel free to experiment with any electronics. Just remember yellowed electronics are brittle and are more prone to cracking or chipping. So be extra careful while disassembling your electronics. Remember to wear gloves and eye protection. 
and always dispose of the peroxide in a proper manner for the environment. And you can't tell that thing was ever yellow. I love this. Playing with one hand is going to be a pain in the ass. This is JSR with a real world review. Any questions, please comment below. Like and subscribe for more videos coming soon. Thanks a lot. Take care.